We will cover a method to draw contour lines of a road. We'll use an example of a one-lane ramp that's exiting a freeway. One of the important pieces of information that we're going to need for drawing contour lines is the cross-section. And so this is the cross-section that is shown for this one-lane ramp. We have a 16-foot wide section of pavement. The center line is offset in this pavement. There's a 2% slope on the pavement. There are six feet wide shoulders on each side of the pavement that slope at 4%. And then there's the ditch beyond that point with the four slope, uh, depending on whether it's a cut or a fill section. And then the back slope that ties into the existing ground at a four to one slope. The other important piece of information we need for drawing contour lines is the elevation along the center line of the roadway. And so this will be derived from the vertical alignment of the road. The vertical alignment is made up of grades on the tangent sections and then vertical curves that tie those tangents together. So we'll move along the vertical alignment um, at the increment specified for the contour lines. That might be uh, one foot or two foot, five foot or ten foot intervals depending on the need of the contour lines. And so for this specific example, we've got uh, the pavement drawn here and the shoulder. Uh, so the center line is offset four feet to the left is pavement, 12 feet to the right of the center line is pavement. And then we encounter the shoulders and ditches beyond that point. Uh, the basic method we're going to use is looking at the relationship uh, between the elevation at various points. A is a point along the center line of the roadway at an increment of the contours that we're interested in. In this case, we're going to be looking at two foot contour lines. Uh, so A is at an elevation of 152 feet. And again, that piece of information would come from our vertical alignment. Point B is a point that is perpendicular to point A, and this is at the edge of the pavement. Uh, the same method will be replicated uh, no matter where we are uh, in our actual uh, alignment. Uh, you can use it to go from pavement to shoulder, shoulder to ditch. Uh, we're going to start here on the pavement though, starting at the center line. So B is perpendicular to A at our next point of interest. C is our next point, and that's going to be the point that's perpendicular to our next interval in the elevation, 154 feet. And then D is the distance between our contours. So the distance between uh, point A and then our next interval in our contour, 100, 154 feet. And then ultimately we're looking for establishing where is point E. So the connection between A and E will actually give us our contour line. And so E is developed based on the length L given by the equation the elevation at point A minus the elevation at point B over the elevation at point C minus the elevation of B multiplied by the distance D. And so we'll go through some examples of how this is actually applied um, in this this case. So zooming out a little bit again we have our 16 foot wide pavement four feet to the left of the center line, 12 feet on the right. We have a six foot wide shoulder and then an 18 foot ditch. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, four slope of the ditch, there'll be the back slope of the ditch, which needs to tie into the existing ground. Uh, in this example, we're only gonna look at the right side of the center line. The same method could be used to fully develop to the left of the center line and further along the alignment as well. So we're going to apply our equation to find the length. And again, we're looking for that distance along the um, edge between the pavement and the shoulder from B. That's L. So start with our equation, then plug in our known values. So the elevation of A is essentially a given. It came from our vertical alignment, 152 feet. We're going to subtract off the elevation at B. We can find the elevation at B by multiplying our 12-foot distance by our 2% slope. 
that would be 0.24 feet. So directly perpendicular to A at the edge of the pavement will be 0.24 feet lower than the center line. And so we get that, again, going back to our cross section. That's our um, cross section design we have. The next point on the denominator here, we're looking for the elevation of C. And we found it the same way we found B. So going up to 154 as our point of interest, our next uh, interval, C will be 0.24 lower than 154 feet. Uh, again, 12 feet multiplied by our 2% cross slope there. So we'll have 153.76 feet. And then again, subtracting the elevation of B, which we found earlier, of 151.76 feet. We'll multiply that by 65 feet, the distance D. And that will give us an L of 7.8 feet, or approximately 8 feet. We'll need to draw this to scale. And so the, now the line can be drawn that connects A and E for our contour. Next, we'll just reset our points of interest as we move along our alignment. So we'll reset A, B, and C relative to our next uh, point of interest. We need to measure D, and then we'll be able to solve for L. So once we solve for L, we can draw that contour line. And then the same process is repeated over and over again. Uh, so we do that along the pavement, and then next move over to the shoulder. And again, we'll reset our points. Now we're moving over to the shoulder. We have A, B, C, and we can measure D. Then we'll be able to calculate L and draw in our contour line. And again, we'll just replicate that process, again, resetting A, B, and C, measuring our distance D to determine that L and draw in the necessary contour line. The final contour line map for this small area, we can repeat that method over and over again uh, to find, move as we move from the pavement to the shoulder, to the foreslope of the ditch, to the backslope of the ditch, which ties in to the existing ground.